doctrines and all of that. And then one of the things you had mentioned was praying. What was that about praying? Before you eat and that versus after you eat? We're not supposed to be celebrating these holidays. So you understand that we're not supposed to celebrate the holidays. But you still continue to do it? Is, is that what you're saying? No, I'm just saying. I gotta be doing something. Like you said, I'm saying. But somebody has to guide you. You're not going to be able to do anything by yourself. You got to be guided. But you had made a statement about praying. What was that statement about praying? So what do you do? So you, you don't got to quote your prayer. I'm saying you pray after you eat. And you don't pray before you eat. Or what about in the middle of you? Alright. And you feel like you're in the midst of sin if you do that? If I do. Okay. That's, that's part of it. That's still, and that's based on what you read. Yeah. Let me uh tell me if this is what you read. Go, go to Deuteronomy 8. Is it in the Old Testament? Okay. Let's we'll start at verse. I think he won verse 10. Yeah, read verse 10. Deuteronomy! Chapter 8, verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. That's what you're talking about? Okay. Let me explain that for you. All right, start at verse 1. Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do. So the first and most important thing is keeping God's commandments. All right? Got to keep God's commandments. Read. That ye may live and multiply. If you don't keep God's commandments, you won't live. You're going to die. God's going to kill you for the uh, judgment of your sins. Read. And go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. So he's preparing the nation of Israel to go into the land of Israel, the land of Jerusalem, to in inherit this land that used to be called Canaan. Right? So he's preparing them for this journey. Read. Verse 2, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. So we're at the end of the 40 year time frame now, right? They just went through all the troubles, the, the serpents in the wilderness, right? The ground opening up, swallowing people whole. Uh, the, uh, the other nations and having to battle against all these other nations. The lack of food, the lack of water. They just went through all these trying times. And now things about to get good. They about to get good because they about to go where? Into the land of milk and honey. Now what typically happens with people when things get good? They forget about God. They forget about God. How often do you see people praying three times a day when they got millions of dollars? But what's the first thing people say when that car smack into your car? Oh my God. Right. That's exactly who you want to call on in your time of distress. So God is preparing them to come out of a time of distress to go into a time of prosperity. All right, so follow me here. Keep going. To humble thee uh -huh. and to prove thee, to know what is in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. This is the good land. You're talking about the land of milk and honey, right? A land of brooks of water, uh -huh. of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Uh -huh. A land of wheat. So this land is going to be full of wheat, right? And barley. And barley. And vines. And vines, so grapes, wine, all that type of stuff, right? and fig trees, uh -huh. and pomegranates, and a land of oil, olive, and honey. And I just asked you, what happens with our people when things get good? Who do they forget about? They forget about God. Keep reading. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Without scarceness. So you ain't going to run out of food in this land. The land of milk and honey. All the resources that you need are going to be right here in the land of Jerusalem. Read. Thou shalt not let anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, uh -huh. and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Now take that understanding, 
Now we're gonna reread verse 10. Read it again. Verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full. When thou hast eaten what? All the good things of this land that I'm about to take you into. Read. Then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God. So it's not talking about one particular meal. It's saying once you get into this land and you partake in all of the wonderful resources, the wheat, the barley, the vines, the figs, and all of that, and you satisfy, read. Then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. So it's, all it's saying is that once you get into this land and partake in the good things, you're going to bless the Lord for the land. This is not talking about your the three or four times a day that you eat on a daily basis and each time that you eat you got to bless the Lord after you eat can you do that yeah you can do that if you want to but there's no sin in blessing the Lord before you eat and there's no sin in blessing the Lord after you eat or while you eat so you want to understand the context there God is preparing his people to go into the promised land and he's telling them once you taste of all the resources that are in this land don't forget about them don't forget how I humbled you in the wilderness and, and you suffered for 40 years with no food, no water, the serpents, the, the, the idolatry, the fornication. And now I brought you, I killed all of your, your foreparents and I brought you into this land of milk and honey. Don't forget about me when you don't have any slackness of bread. All right, now I'm going to show you one more thing, Matthew 26. Let's come back up. In Matthew chapter 26, you got Christ he was about to eat the Passover meal. And what, what were the two biggest parts of the Passover meal that we typically read about? So in church on Communion Sunday, what do they typically have? The blood and the, the little wafer thing. Right, so you got the wine and you got the bread. Yeah. Right, okay, so let's, with that understanding now, we know that Christ didn't do any sin, right? Right, okay. So with that understanding that we have now, let's let's read this a little bit more. Start at verse, start at verse 20, 20, you Matthew 26. Start at verse 22. Matthew chapter 26. Well, start at verse 19. Verse 19. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them. And they made ready the Passover. So they made ready the Passover. So they had to kill the lamb, they dressed the lamb, they had the unleavened bread, and they had the bitter herbs, according to Exodus chapter 12. All right, now jump down, just to speed it up, jump down to verse 26. Verse 26. And as they were eating. And what? As they were eating. Now this says, as they were eating. So they had already started eating, but they had not what? They had not blessed the food, but look. They had not finished eating either. They had not finished eating either. Let's see what happened, Rick. Jesus took bread. He took bread. And blessed it. And he what? Blessed it. He blessed the food while they were still eating. So that's going to further the understanding to help you understand that Deuteronomy 8 is not talking about a daily meal and how you got to bless your food after every meal. It's saying when you went into the land of Israel, and you partook in all the wonderful things of that land and how beautiful that land is, don't forget about God who brought you into that land and brought you through the wilderness for 40 years. All right, finish that verse up. And blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. All right, so you got better understanding on that now? All right, all praise. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Is you. And finally, my brother, be strong.